mrcb120.exe. It's a tool that's designed just to grab memory dumps. So you can literally get it, put it on your device, run it, tell it where you want to save the memory dump to. Now I've already copied this memory dump over to Linux, but I still want to walk you through the process. And we're just gonna call it demo one dot raw so we save that tell it to put it there and we started and what it's doing and i bumped the memory rate way down on this machine so that this would finish before the, the webinar is over but it's taking a raw dump of memory now once you have that raw memory dump then you can do proper memory forensics on this device because a lot of times these indicators may not show up because the beacons have been set to wait anywhere from minutes up to weeks and we don't even know how long some of these beacons are sitting there waiting for so it may not be something that you readily see in traffic but if not there may be a chance to look in memory and see some evidence of it there so it dropped this raw memory dump all right you can run volatility on windows so you can go to volatility website get one uh, volatility for windows download it here what volatility is it, it is a memory forensics tool Right, and in here, I've already pulled over this sunboo.raw because I ran out of time trying to spell sunburst. But uh, what can happen <clears throat> is now we can look at this raw memory dump. Now, here's where you have to be careful. So, first, without having volatility, we can just use a Linux strings command against that raw memory dump. And it shows you human readable strings in memory. Looks like that, right? But for most of us that are just normal humans, that doesn't help us because we can't read that fast. But again, basic Linux here, you can take that and we can grep for those exact IOCs right off the FireEye website, right? If I go out, just to kind of remind you of where we got this from, I had these pulled up. So right there, this is their IOCs right there for the traffic or for the calls out. I can grep for any of these things here. Digital cloud, free online, deaf security, since that's the one we're focusing on. So I can go right in to the strings command, say pipe that out to grep, and grep for deft. And as you can see, we get quite a few hits there. Now, as I was showing you earlier, one customer did this, and what ended up happening was they freaked out, but they forgot that they just stood up Snort and had it running with these rules that had these strings in there. So that is where I kind of showed them like, wait a minute, you can't possibly have that many hits. So I showed them how to just basically say, pipe that further to grep. And if we want to exclude the Snort rules, we can exclude, for example, like content which is a string that you see in the snort rule. And what ends up happening is now you just see like the real, you know, the goods there, where it was actually queried for real, right? And that's pulled right out of memory. Now there are other things, you know, there are IOCs as far as specific binaries that you might look for, specific DLLs that you might look for, you can look for those in memory using volatility, like you can even look for processes. For example, uh, one of the things that I found weird, and this is this server that we're looking at here, uh, this is copied from a compromised server that, that definitely had horizontal movement. They didn't just install it and go away, they actually did do things. But what let me know that is when I pointed volatility at it, And uh, let's just give it the profile. And I told it to give me a list of processes. That's PS list. Now, again, I'm kind of doing this in teach mode a little bit, but more just presentation, but I'm teaching. 
So as you go back and watch the recording of this, you can uh, duplicate these things that I'm doing here. So looking at the list of processes that came out of this machine, a couple of them uh, definitely send up a red flag in my mind when I look at those processes. For example, this right here, I wasn't happy to see, nor was I happy to see this right here. So uh, what I wanted to do is kind of try to see what these processes are running as children of, like what where they come from. So for that, I just simply told volatility, I keep forgetting, getting mixed up between Windows and Linux here, uh, to give me a tree view by entering PS tree as a plugin. And by the way, I shouted out uh, Microsoft and FireEye and all those guys. Big shout out to the volatility team as well. Um, because they actually definitely have been tremendous in getting us support and getting us things to, to kind of help make this, um, you know, kind of a, a big thing. So as you can see on the tree view there, what this shows you is not only the processes, but it shows you which process is running as a child of which process. For example, um, this chi.exe is running as a child of command.exe, which was running as a child of the SQL Server. So that kind of makes me think that, you know, the SQL Server may have been exploited because I don't know what chi.exe is. So one of the things that I did, and of course, again, we've renamed all this stuff, is I wanted to take this thing out of memory. So we can see it has a PID of 3812. That's the process ID. I can tell volatility to take that. Thirty-eight twelve. It's going to make a directory here called uh, known, and then I can tell volatility specifically. dump out that 3812 process to that directory that I just created their name unknown. And it'll actually carve that fully functioning binary out of memory for me. Right? So right there. Uh, okay, I have to adjust the paging on that. And the other one, another one that we saw that we didn't like, was the one that had like the weird name, uh, this one right here. We didn't like that one either. And it's got a PID of uh, 3348. So we could do the same with it. And the point being, once you get these extracted out, you can actually now go and take these things like we did and put them in a sandbox or you can take them and put them uh, i wouldn't recommend this you could put them like on virus total or somewhere like that to have all these different vendors scan it and tell you it's bad but again the risk of that is if it's you don't want your confidential information to become part of public domain so when you put your sample files or your suspect files on those public services like that then your information ends up becoming part of that public domain so we uh, what we're doing in all these cases is putting those in sandboxes, but we're able to know kind of what's going on there. So that is one approach to looking at memory. Like it allows us to see what's going on in memory, even connections. You know, if I wanted to tell um, volatility to show me any connections, I could run net scan against it. And if there were active connections, I could see those. You know, it's almost like looking at uh, Netstat on a machine that's not even there anymore. Now, the fact that you get all these DNS.exes, this is now this is a piece of malware as well, but it's separate. And this is part of what you're what you're uh, learning here, as far as when we say that, like, okay, we're finding the solar winds, we're finding Sunburst, but we're finding other things that seem to have happened around identically the exact same time. What you just saw there is an is a classic example of that. We're seeing 
other malware, we're finding malware that we've not seen before, we're finding signatures that we haven't seen, that was kind of happening in parallel, and that's why a lot of people are kind of coming to the logical conclusion that solar winds is just one vector that may not be the only vector. It may not even be the biggest vector, right? It's just a very effective one. New episodes of the Cyberwork podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn. Stay up to date on all things Cyberwork.